a frontal? So that's the cervix. And the cervix of the uterus protrudes into the vagina. What I'm drawing in blue belongs to the vagina. Okay? This is cervix, this is vagina. If we look at a lateral view, sagittal view, from that view. The space, kind of like a moat around the cervix, is known as the fornix. So from a frontal view, we see two lateral fornices, which is plural. We can't see the anterior or the posterior because they're, they've been cut off in this pronal section.
We do have a gland, a pair of glands. This would be the urogenital diaphragm or external urethral sphincter in the female. So in the same location, homologous, equivalent to the male bulbal urethral glands, we have the female bulbal urethral glands, and those will lubricate the vestibule area, all right? But fluid will seep through these cells to lubricate the vagina. No actual duct leading to that area. This is a sagittal view. Uh, well, before we get to that, let's look at the hymen. So the hymen is a membrane that before uh, penetration of the vagina, usually partially encloses, this would be the urethra, glands, clitoris, uh, vestibule, urethra area here, vaginal opening, partially closes with various forms, um, appearances. That last one is over after childbirth. In some children or early teenagers, that can be completely closed, and there's no outlet for the menses once the girl starts her period. It has to be in sight. Okay. Um, we'll talk about female circumcision in just a few minutes, and the labia sometimes are sewn shut in between the periods of those girls or women, and then would have to be resewn after the period. The labia menorah, uh, surround that on each side, um, but don't contribute to it and can change appearance with childbirth. Tampons, um, digital intercourse, horseback riding, there's a lot of things that can stretch the opening of the vagina. So it would be not necessarily a correct assumption that if a girl has intercourse for the first time, female you know, intercourse for the first time, if it's not painful and she doesn't bleed, that does not necessarily mean she's not a virgin, okay? In fact, it's probably helpful to her rest of her sexual activity if it's not a painful occurrence. So this is the last thing I can talk about with my daughter. Um, I have no idea when was the last time she had a period because I never buy her anything. She has her dad buy it, whatever she uses. I don't even know what she uses. I offered to take her to the drugstore and let her try out different things. And she was, no, that's fine, well, I already have it. Okay, <laughs> fine. My mother, who's a nurse, we were overseas. So I'm 13, 12 years old, starting my period, and she gives me a box of tampons. It says here, read the instructions. <laughs> well, they were her tampons. I couldn't fit them in my vagina. So it took me years to figure out what this was all about until my older sister handed me a box of the junior size tampons. So I was determined that my daughter wasn't going to have to go through this. And here I am perfectly willing to explain things to her, and she won't talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. So, but using a digital, I know, whatever, to slightly stretch the hymen over time makes that first sexual experience a much more rewarding one for the female without the expectation of the pain that might go along with that. Let's look at this same area as external genitalia, and then we'll stop and take a break and come back to the play All right, so about five, seven minutes. So in this view, uh, similar to what we were looking at when we saw the erectile tissue on the male, this is that view with the skin intact. And you can see that we have a labia minora. That means small lip, or minor lip. Labia is lip. It doesn't have hair follicles. And it forms a prepuce or hood over the glands clitoris. The lab manual that I use with my students at Sac State calls it just the clitoris, as you can see here, and I fight with them all the time because we wouldn't call the tip of the penis the entire penis. All right, so please, for full credit, you need to call that the glans clitoris. The clitoris itself is all the erectile tissue uh, stock shaft material. So the labia menorah. <laughs> And this is homologous to what structure of the male? The shaft of the penis, all right? It encloses the urethra, the penile urethra. So bad. This is homologous to glands, 
Venus. And within this space is the vestibule. All right, so between the two labia is the vestibule. And we have the opening for the urethra. And then a larger opening for the vagina. With childbirth, or sometimes women are born with particularly long labia minora, it might be rather than say a half an inch to three quarters, it might be two or three inches long, wide coming out, so this space here. Um, and that could be difficult with intercourse, it catches and gets pulled into the vagina. Um, also with childbirth, this changes shape and may become irregular, it certainly darkens to a deeper purple color. And so for either reason, women will sometimes go and get that trimmed off. Um, makes sense if it's you know, three inches long and it's a cosmetic surgery. Um, if it's just an irregular surface and it's uneven one side of the, compared to the other. So that's a, a cosmetic choice. The, these two openings right here are for the bulbourethral glands that I'll show you on a, a deeper or a sagittal section. And they will lubricate the vestibule. They secrete into the vestibule, not into the vagina. Because remember, the vagina doesn't have any glands. It actually secretes into it. Lateral to the labia minora, we have the labia majora. Like the scrotum, to which they are homologous, they have hair follicles. That's what these are, these are freckles. Okay. The male pattern of hair follicles, well the pattern of hair follicles is called, this is for three, and in the female, the pattern is like this, in the male, the pattern is like that. So if you've read one of those Dan Browns or the other guys, um, symbols, the Da Vinci Code talks about the male and female triangles, referring to this. So this would be the base of the scrotum, and the hair follicles come to a point at the shaft of the penis. Sometimes you can see a line of hair going up to the umbilicus. All right. In the female, the mons pubis, which is this area of adipose tissue over the symphysis pubis is the wider portion and the hair tapers down at the anus. So, just reverse that way. So here is the mons pubis in a sagittal section. I don't know if it's supposed to make the missionary position more important, or something more comfortable, or why it's there, but guys don't have Here's the labia minora and the labia majora. Okay. And then in a cross section, you're seeing the glans clitoris and then the corpora cavernosa, which we'll cover after break, and cruis. Here's the bulb, uh, bulbal urethral glands. And then on this sagittal view, I'm not going to take the time to draw it, there's two pairs of glands. Note their location. They're secreting into the urethra not into the vagina. Ever heard of the G-spot? Okay. In a male, the G-spot is a pressure, so a finger digital penetration of the rectum, pressure anteriorly um, increases sexual feelings and satisfaction and so on. That's the prostate gland. All right. For years, women were saying, well, they had a G-spot too, and the male OBGYNs were saying, no, you don't, because you don't have a prostate gland. And females are saying, well, I ejaculate when I have an orgasm, some women. Um, well, that's urine coming out. Well, you do a pH test, and it's not acidic, like urine would be. It's alkaline. So they're like, so in 2003, maybe 2002, these pairs of glands on either side of the urethra were officially recognized anatomical association and medical associations as being homologous to the male prostate gland. So they are identified as paraurethral glands. They can secrete when a woman has an orgasm, and that's the female ejaculate. 
is also thought to contribute to the female G-spot. So pressure in the vagina on the anterior wall of that would be in the same general area and structure homologous to or equivalent to the male prostate gland and can increase sexual feeling. All right, so bulbo urethral, also known, we love the AKA, also known as greater vestibular, or Bartholins, that's the less common name. These are the equivalent to the bulbourethral or Cowper's glands of the male. Periurethral would be homologous or equivalent to the prostate glands. Stopping there, that's where the quiz will end for female on Thursday. Two male reproductive, identifying sperm as early or primary.